So there's a lot more work to go into looking into you know what these embeddings mean, but they're they're different than people usually refer to embeddings because they exist across time. Whereas usually when people refer to embeddings, it's just a single vector for a node. So even though this was trained on four seconds worth of audio, we can actually um, get embeddings for infinite amounts of time. I mean, you can just keep on uh, going. So we can reconstruct things that were much longer than it was actually trained on. Um, so I, you can probably go through and listen to these, some of these examples, but you might find something like a flute horn. Um, so you might find something like the flugelhorn. Uh, that's the original sound. And then when uh, we get this embedding and we push it back into this autoregressive process here, um, and, it, and it controls this sort of crazy feedback system, it makes something that sounds like a flugelhorn. You can even hear it has some of that vibrato and some of those things going on. Uh, and like I said before, you can apply this to longer systems. So here's the case of an organ that's played over the course of 10 seconds, uh, many different notes. Even though this, in this training, it's only seen one note at training. And that last note uh, is actually held out for a lot longer too. So that's outside of what the training was, was used to seeing. I did that, that's just a singer's exercise usually, the dun 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 just for fun. Um, and so you can see now when we pass it through WaveNet, it hasn't seen anything like this, but it does its best job to do it. You see at the note, at the note boundaries, it's never seen a note boundary before, but it just sort of glissandos between things because it's like, that's the best I can do. <laughs> notice it has a really, um, it doesn't hit it perfectly. There's a lot of extra harmonics on there and there's a lot of like this kind of distortion, but it kind of, I don't know, I, when you listen to a lot of this, it's, it's kind of fun. It's sort of similar to distortion. It's a musical type of distortion. It's not white noise or it's not Fourier artifacts. It's musical in the sense that it's harmonically related to the note and it gives it a very unique can, uh, tam, you know, character to the whole instrument itself. Um, so what happens when we have an embedding space is we can actually interpolate between notes as well. So um, we can just take the embedding for this note and the embedding for this note, and we just say, if we average them, what do we get? So if you were to take an original sound, okay, that's a bass, uh, and here's a flute. Now if you were to just average those two sounds in sound space, you would just get both the sounds mixed together. So now if we take it in with the WaveNet, which also has some distortion on it because for computational reasons, we do an 8-bit softmax because we have to do it over all the time steps. So uh, this is an ongoing area of research. We'll, we'll fix this, but it, it has a little bit of distortion, especially at lower frequencies. It's exacerbated. So you can still hear the bass note clearly, but it's got a going on. Um, and here's a flute. Notice it even has that reverb there in the end. And so when we just average the two of them and then use that as the primer to then generate sound, it creates something that has a bit of the timbre of both of them, but also has its own life to it. And it's not just a superposition of the two. You notice there at the end, it gets that, that sort of upper harmonics and stuff because it's just, it's just, um, Sort of a, it's sort of like a physical model in a system. It's an infinite impulse response filter. It's just a very, very complicated one. It's 6,000 taps and they're through a whole bunch of nonlinearities and stuff. Um, so, it, so it has a sort of physical response to it that has that type of um, uh, harmonic character. Similarly, if you take an organ, every once in a while it does give little pops. You know, that's a, I think with better training we could get rid of that. Um, if you combine that with the flute, you know, it has that nice sort of phasing quality. And similarly, if you combine the bass and the organ, listen, you'll hear a lot of um, sort of org, it's just like a bass note with a lot of like organ decay stuff in, at the end. Yeah, all that type of stuff. Cool.